Oh, good morning. Let us pray. Father, thank you that we can be here this morning, gathered around your word, gathered as a, as a church, so gathered as a family that you are raising up, raising up in, the, in our relationship with you, that we can go out into the world and live it out in our friendship circles, our family circles, even in the workplace, Father. Thank you that we have the, the, the privilege to worship you as we do freely. Father, I pray that you bless this morning's service. May you anoint every word. And Holy Spirit, I pray that, that you pour out this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. While we get ready to dig into this morning's service, we can go to Acts chapter 1, of course. Uh, just to set the background and the scene for the Pentecost. If you were a Jewish male, sorry ladies, if you were a Jewish male, this would be one of three pilgrimage festivals where all Jewish men were required to go up to Jerusalem and uh, appear before the Lord in, at the temple, and then you would need to offer a sacrifice. Now, the Pentecost goes by another name called Harvest, uh, um, the Feast of the Harvest. It's the first harvest of the year, then all the men go up and they give thanks to God and they offer sacrifice. Now, imagine a city, as with a Passover, and um, all this city that normally are not filled with Jewish males from all over, are now filled with Jewish men from all over. So there's an influx of um, the traffic. So there's many people in that city at that time. So just to set that scene, and I want to begin reading... Acts uh, uh, chapter 1, from verse 4 and 5, what Jesus spoke to the disciples. This water was full. Thank you, Jesus, for fullness. And it reads, And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the, of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And it gives them, and Jesus gives them this promise that you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? We will see that in uh, uh, chapter 2 when we go there. But it's a very significant thing that Jesus is saying because at the end of his of his ministry and his life he began saying um, uh, to the disciples that I will give you the helper the Holy Spirit um, we don't need to page there I'm just going to read John chapter 14 verse 28 I believe it is which says you heard me you heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you love me, you will have rejoiced because I am going. Um, no, it's not that one. Sorry. Uh, so 25 and uh, so 26. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said, said to you. So Jesus is preparing the, the disciples what is about to happen. And in his last few days on before he ascends he says to them you will receive the holy spirit you will be baptized in the holy spirit not many days from now and it's and he tells them to not to depart from from jerusalem and then in acts 1 verse verse 8 i'm just going to read from there no 7 and 8 sorry he said to them it is not for you so to know the so times or seasons that the Father has fixed by His own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, 
and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and uh, so to the end of the earth. The book of Acts begins almost at the same place where the Gospels end. If we can read um, Matthew 28, verse 19, 18, sorry. It reads, And Jesus came um, and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, so teaching them to observe all that I have so commanded you. And behold, I am with you always so to the end of the age. Jesus is giving the so disciples a so command to go into all the world, and make disciples, preaching the good news. In Jesus' life, the sermon could actually be the, the kingdom part five, but it's, um, it's a pentacles this morning, because Jesus is saying, go and continue what I have done. Go make disciples. And in Acts 1 verse 8, he says, you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has to come, and you will be my witnesses. To be a witness is to go and tell people of Jesus. So the so command ends in, in so the gospel that, we, that the disciples and us included should go into all the world and preach the gospel. And in Acts 1 verse 8, Jesus says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes so that you can go and do that. And signs will follow because if the power of the Holy Spirit comes, signs follow. And if you read through the book of Acts, which will be our next series, which will start very soon, not this coming Sunday, but after that, we are going to go through the book of Acts and see exactly what has happened when the Holy Spirit came and how it affected their, well, not affected their lives, but how what Jesus has done is continuing through the work of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. And some say that the gifts and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit has ceased because it was only for the first century church so that the church can be established and my question is is the church finished being established? No. There's the corners of the earth where the gospel have not yet preached. There are people in our own lives who have not heard the gospel yet. That empty chair next to you is a testimony of how much work there is to do. Because we have received an assignment from God to go. And with that, Jesus says, you will receive the Holy Spirit to go. It's not just you, you, you going out of your own power, because there's no way that that can be in any way possible. It's only by the power of the Holy Spirit that we can fulfill the calling and the mission God, God gave us. It's only by the power of the Holy Spirit. You can try out of your own, but it might not work that great. You receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. And we read in a, so chapter 2, a bit long read, uh, so, uh, so 2 verse 1. So just, I want to remind you of that picture of the city in Jerusalem, or Jerusalem is a city, but Jerusalem being filled with all these Jewish males, making their way from all wherever they are, all everywhere in the, in, in the known world, they make their way to Jerusalem, and it's a central place for what is about to happen, to happen. And it says in uh, so 2 verse 1, When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all sitting together in one place. Remember, Jesus said, don't go from here. So they were busy waiting. They were all sitting together in one place. And suddenly they, they came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire uh, appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, The scene is busy being set. I'm just going to keep on referring to the scene is busy being set. Now, 
they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews. Remember all those main Jews? It says, um, So devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because one was hearing them speak in his own language, I want to say own native language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that, that we hear each of us in his own native language, um, so, um, so Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, um, so Cappadocia, Sopontus, and Asia, Phrygia, so Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling our own language the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying so to one another, what does this mean? What does this mean? Just to deviate a bit, I feel that seminaries where you go to study theology should have a class to, to, to teach you how to pronounce the names in the Bible. <laughs> that would be very beneficial. <laughs> But now we see this. What does all this mean? If we think back to Genesis, I will have the chapter wrong if I say it off the scuff. God said, be fruitful and multiply. But mankind did not, they multiplied, but they did not spread out and dominate the earth as God commanded. So God scattered them. If you don't want to scatter, I will scatter you. And he caused the division of languages so that people can go their own way. Because so together they thought they were, they, they were better than, than God and they wanted to build their own tower to show how great they are. But God said, no, you are not being obedient to what I said. Go, go, go have dominion over the earth. And, and, he, and he gave languages to, to, to cause them to each go their own way. And now we see something similar happening where the Holy Spirit is poured out and all the nations can hear God speak. All the nations that are there can hear the sound of God. If we read the Bible through a missionary lens of going and God showing who He is and God inviting people in to His kingdom, then we have it right. And if we read this in the same way, that it's God opening up for everyone. It will later be, be confirmed in Acts through a vision that Peter sees that now we can eat everything, meaning, well, yes, we can eat all the food, and they did eat all the food, um, meaning all the wrong meats, good meats, not wrong meats, but, um, but that everyone has now access to the gospel message. Everyone is now part of God's people. But he, but he empowered them with the Holy Spirit. And immediately Peter went out. And what did he do? He preached. He preached. He, wa he was filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And he went so to preach. And he preached. And I'm not going to read his sermon. But I do want to say that he so quotes Joel chapter, chapter 2 verse 28 to verse 30 to these men who are listening, and these men are Jews, and so they would know Joel, and he says to them, and in the last days, uh, this is uh, from uh, chapter 2 verse 17, sorry, and in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. I want to put climax on all. There's been a study on the word all. What does the word all include? It excludes... It includes everything and excludes nothing. So all means all. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, servants in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. In there. And the sermon, the fascinating good part of the sermon is, 
I like the translation that puts the numbers in actual numbers and not a word for the number because then it's easy to spot. But we read, after that sermon, 3,000 people got saved. The first sermon ever preached, 3,000 people got saved. And the church grew. And throughout Acts you see thousands of numbers being added to the kingdom. Those with demons were freed. Those who were sick were healed. And you see the, the Holy Spirit just flowing out. It's a continuation of what Jesus has done. And that's why Luke, Luke writes, writes Acts to show the Roman governor who is persecuting Paul that this Jesus who is being preached is a continuation from Jesus' life. And the Holy Spirit fills and so completes. It's, so the kingdom of heaven so continued. And we are all invited to partake in that. We all have that assignment to go into all the world and to make disciples of, of all nations. And Jesus says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes so that you can be my witnesses. And the beauty of Acts that I want to say, and maybe I'm giving some of these series away, but it's okay. The book ends, no, the book begins with them in Jerusalem. And Jesus says, in all in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. It begins in Jerusalem and it ends in the end of the earth. At that time would be the whole of Rome. That is just... And it reminds me of that parable that we read or that we went through, the, the mustard seed. It be, be, begins so small, but it ends so big. Even more interestingly, Christianity became the, the official Roman re religion a few years later. Not short few years, many years later, but not too many in the near future. It became, Christianity became the, Roman, the, the official Roman religion where Rome used to be full of so pagan worship and sacrifice and all of those things that we read. It be Christianity became the religion. You are called to go and preach the gospel. In, Jer in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. It means there's no area that we are exempt from preaching the gospel and doing what we need to do. Sometimes we want to begin at the end of the world, going into all the nations, but when we look at Jerusalem, our own, own house and our own, own circle, we have people so close to us that if we would tell them that we are following Jesus, they might say, Oof, maybe not me. Or, really? We need to begin at our homes, at our lives, but at the same time, Focus on the bigger circle and the bigger circle. If, if we can draw, draw three, three circles of influence where the gospel should be preached, it would be a small circle, your house, where you are every day in your personal space. If you want to draw a bigger circle, friends, family, workplace, that's the bigger circle. And then the bigger circle is everywhere out there. That's the, that's the easiest place to go and preach the gospel because you don't need your life as a sermon, you can just preach a sermon. But the smaller the, the, the circle gets, the more your life is, is the sermon that they will listen to and not the words you speak, and that gives us back slow. But it's true. We have an assignment from God. That empty chair next to you, you can see that as your assignment. And I'm not talking about shifting members. I'm talking about bringing new people into the kingdom of God. We are not Planet Fitness where if you, if you gym at this branch and then you move to that branch, Planet Fitness didn't gain a new member, you just shifted branches. We need new members to join. And that's up to us to do. God will fill these in, in um, time. I'm just saying that we have an assignment to go and preach the gospel. No one is exempt. And the beauty of it all is that we get to have the power of the Holy Spirit to do that. It's not, it's not me, it's not Lou Allen standing here preaching. It's the Holy Spirit that gives the power to do so. 
If I were to, to do a sermon out of my own, it would be very lifeless. And we would look at the, the dead bones, and even Elijah, when he saw the dead bones, God asked, can these bones live? If you make them, they can. God will bring life with the power of the Holy Spirit. Even in... And then, with the filling of the Holy Spirit, there are, there are gifts that we see. If we go through Acts, we get gifts to do that. Mark says it greatly. Um, Mark chapter 16. I'm just going to read it. I need to page. Um, Mark 16, verse 15. And he said to to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will uh, accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. Every, every time I read this, this serpent, serpent that they will be uh, bitten by snakes but nothing will, will happen to them. Um, if they pick up serpents with their hands and if they drink deadly poison it will not hurt them. And we read, so Paul shipwrecked and he grabs a wood and a viper bits him and Nothing happens to him. And those around him are like, <laughs> this is a dead man walking. Well, he did not die that day. So that's just, if Jesus said, said it, it's true. And we can trust his word and we can trust what he says. But we have an assignment to go out. And I know there's the personal human element that stands in the way that holds up a mirror to ourselves. And the moment we, God puts on a heart to share something with someone about Jesus that you don't know, and you, and you don't want to do it because your humanness blocks you, then it's no longer about God. The moment your, your fears intervene and intercept, then it's about you and not God. I'm sorry. So, I mean, the, the amazing thing is, is that it's, it, it's God doing everything that He does, not us. We are just the vessel. We are just there. God opens up that, that drawer, grabs a, a, a spoon and stirs His coffee. We are just that, that spoon. We just need to be available. We just need to be there. My prayer always is that God, here I am, use me. If I'm not ready, make me ready, but here I am. Yes, sure, I'm going to miss it sometimes, but I'm, I am ready, I'm here, use me. That's my prayer, almost every day. Uh, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes, because it is not us. We have an assignment from, 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 from God to go into all the world. You have a, a calling, and your, yours might look different to mine, it's okay. God still has a plan for your life. But you need the power of the Holy Spirit to live out that plan. Because we cannot do it on our own. It's not about us, it's about God. It's about stepping out in, a, in, in obedience to God and the plan that He has for our lives. We can only do it with the Holy Spirit. And after that first sermon was so preached, 3,000 people were added into the kingdom. And then I want to read Romans 8 verse 11 as in encouragement to us to know what, what does it mean for us to have the Holy Spirit in us. If you have been baptized with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is in you and there will be signs that follow. And Romans 8 verse 11 says, If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies, mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. God's Spirit dwells in you. And if you have not been baptized with the Holy Spirit, if you have not been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, or maybe you have been filled and something happened along the, wa along the way and the fire died down, let's reignite that fire. Let's, hoy, 
let's ask God to reignite that fire. Because we need the Holy Spirit to be able to do what God called us to do. We cannot do it on our own. I think that's the best thing for, for, for me because it takes so much pressure to perform off of us because it's not us performing. It's, 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 it's God. You can prepare the best sermon, but if the Holy Spirit is not there, it's going to fall on dead ears. That's the truth. I read something from a prophet who I will not mention his name, but he was invited to a church, a mega church in America, whose name I also will not mention. And they wanted prophetic feedback, what that means, I'm not sure, but they, they wanted prophetic feedback from this prophet of what he, would, what he would critique them on in their service flow and what he would praise them for in their morning show. They ran five services every Sunday, back to back. That's a lot of services. And that preacher had the best, the best sermon you could think of. Written to the T, perfect language, perfect, eloquently, nice big suit. The musicians were the best musicians you could hire because he did hire them. They were secular musicians he hired to come and play worship music in the house of God. Unsaved people to play the band. They did not miss a note. They did not miss a beat. It was perfect to human, human capability, but the Holy Spirit was just not there. If you don't invite the Holy Spirit in, it will be like that. Empty. There's enough emptiness in, in this world. Our relationship with God should not be that. Our witness to other people should not be that. If you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, or if you have been filled with the Holy Spirit but the fire died down, or you just want to want it reignited, sometimes you run that car but the, the battery gets flat, let God jumpstart you again this morning. But don't leave here the same. Don't leave here the same. We've been trusting God this week for Him to pour out His Spirit. And my experience is, is when we ask God and we trust God and we know that His Word is true, living and active, it will happen. So we are going to do a last song and then afterwards, come forward. Come forward if you want prayer. And we will pray for you. But don't leave missing that. Because that is when the world um, is changed. It's when Jesus died and His Spirit was poured out so we can continue what He began. That's our assignment.